Hi and welcome to your next lecture in Computer Science for Everyone. Now that we've created our list and you've got full understanding of how that works, let's expand that and create our queue that we talked about in the first uh, lecture of this section. So what can a queue do? We can add a new element or a new node at the end and we can remove an element from the beginning just like any queue. When you join a queue, you join the queue at the end and then the first person of the queue will leave and then the next one will leave and so on. We can find the size of the queue and we can print the queue. I said print itself because it's something the queue does. So we have the push method is going to add a new element at the end. Pop is going to remove an element from the beginning. Size is going to get its size and print is going to print the queue. So we're going to create a waiting list queue. We're going to hold the names and telephone numbers of each person in the waiting list and we can also add or remove people from the list or the queue. So how to implement the queue? We are going to use the list we've created previously whereas we're going to change the node to hold the data that we're holding in this case, the name and the telephone number instead of the student data. But how do we add an element to the end? Because our queue right now is adding elements to the beginning. Well, instead of adding to the end and removing at the beginning, we can save us some work and add at the beginning and remove at the end. Doing the same but in the inverse. This is so that we can use the method for adding we've already got programmed. So push is going to be our lists add to list method that adds at the beginning. And pop is going to remove an element from the end. Instead of push remove push adding at the end and pop remove from the beginning, we're going to make push add at the beginning and pop remove from the end. Then size is going to get the size and print is going to print the queue. So these are going to be our four methods in the queue class. So pop is going to remove at the end. We've already got push because we've programmed that in the previous couple of videos. So let's create pop. Pop is going to remove the last element in the queue. So how do we do this? We go to the second to last node and we make the node to which this node is pointing equal to null. So remember in the last presentation I mentioned that this is how removing nodes work. We make nothing point to them and then Java removes them from memory. Well, this is still what happens. But let's take a look at a more visual explanation. So we have our key. And then we have the first node, the second node, and the third node. Then null. First node, second to last node, and the last node. So we go to the second to last node, and we make it point to null instead of to the last node. Although we are not explicitly deleting this node because we don't have a way to do that in Java, Java will remove it from us, uh, sorry, will remove it from memory for us so we don't have to do anything. And eventually we are left with a queue of two nodes. To find the size, we simply go through all the nodes in the list and we create a variable that will store the number of nodes. And each time we visit a node, we increase that variable by one. I think this is a fairly simple thing to do. And print just like for the size method, but every time we visit a node, we print the value of the node instead of increasing a variable. So the queue is actually going to be a lot simpler to implement now that we've created our list. So let's take a look at the programming of our queue in the next lecture. But before that, you can try to program it yourself and you can use the document that you will find a download for at the uh, very next um, slot in the course. So when you go on to the next um, lecture in the lecture viewer, you will actually find a document and you can um, print that off or just look at it in your computer and try to program the queue there. I'm going to use that document to explain how to implement the queue so that you can try yourself. If you have a lot of problems, however, just move on and watch the programming exercise and we'll try to implement the queue there. So I'll see you in the next one.